Why can't I get my way? Do you know how connected old Chael is? Do you understand? I get a hold of Dana White right now. Do you know how valuable that makes me to somebody, some up and coming fighter? I get a hold of Scott Coker right now. I get a hold of Chachery within 25 minutes. He's on a different continent at different times. So I get a hold of him within 25 minutes, and that's probably an exaggeration. I get a hold of Joe Silva. I get a meeting with Lorenzo. I get Sean Shelby on the phone right now. I get a hold of Mike Kogan. Did I ever say Kogan? I mean, I'm just sharing with you, but does, does that impress you at all? At a minimum, even if my name dropping didn't impress you, you would have to go, oh, that guy's pretty connected. He's been here for a long time. Okay, so what? Right, but, but that's the claim that I'm trying to make. Sean Shelby's a friend of mine. If I was in Vegas and I was in trouble, I could call Sean Shelby to put that in perspective. And he would take the call and he would help me. Do you know what he wouldn't do? He will not take my wishes when it comes to matchmaking. I can never get my way. Like, I never get to be happy. And I know that there's a market for an occasional way of thinking. By me, like, let me give you a great example. UFC 300. There has been rumors of which weren't resisted, which was Ronda Rousey was going to come back for UFC 300. I mean, that, that, that is silly beyond belief. But without doing a diatribe as to why that's silly, there's still a factualness that that wasn't resisted. And it wouldn't have anything to do with Ronda. What I'm talking about is, well, it's 300. It's a special event. It's a bit of a spectacle. Well, let's go ahead and do it. There, there was rumors and talks of, of St. Pierre and Diaz. Part two, I mean, I'm, I'm just sharing for you, like there, there seemed to be something about 300. For, for about three hours in time, Brock Lesnar was going to come back. I mean, I, I have no idea why at 300, anybody would think we're going to do things differently than we did for the 299 to got, get us here. Not to mention 300 is actually the third time they're doing it because 200 and 100 fall in that same category. And like, there was no spoofs. Like, I don't know where that would come from, but that isn't the point. The point is when those suggestions came up, they weren't resisted. There was actually an excitement. And I see it that same way. I see that same nostalgia. Now, it isn't realistic that we're going to bring somebody in off the shelf. We're not going to give TV time in a feature match to somebody on a one-off. It just isn't in the cards. But the idea wasn't resisted because the idea of getting these matches that maybe we missed before. You know, what we'll regret out there for the hardcore fans is that we didn't put St. Pierre and Anderson together when they were asking to be together. Anderson and John Jones was a talk. I mean, what, what, oh my goodness, the regret that we had, we didn't make the match we could make when we could make it. I'm just sharing for you that while we're not going to go to the shelf, we're not going to go to the retirement home. We're not going to reinsert and get them in the pool and do all the them. We're like, none of these things are going to happen. But when the false rumors came out, they were, there wasn't a resistance because there is something for that nostalgia. So what if we were to meet in the middle? What if we were to take those matches but not go into retirement to do it? Not find somebody that is past their heyday to do it? Why not do it with guys that we currently have? Guys that are in the pool, guys that are active, guys that are still fighting. I mean, there's ones that have got away. A leading candidate... Rumor-wise, for 300, I don't predict this for you, I'm sharing with you for the narrative, for the phenomenon, is McGregor versus Chandler. Now, if that doesn't happen at 300, we, we do all at least understand that it will be a main event, that that's a very big fight, that that's a fight that our industry has been looking forward to, which means all of you. It's been a fight in your mind, possibly longer than any other fight that you're going to end up getting has been in your mind. But, but if we look at that, we also understand that it's one of those very rare occur, uh, occasions where there's no significance. If Connor beats Chandler, he's not now, he should be fighting for the title. If Chandler beats Connor, well, he should be next for the title. Just for example. 
But when I talk about the lack of significance, I'm not giving that fight a hard time. I'm, pr I'm praising that fight. I'm, I'm using it to prove a, a point. They don't even know what weight class they're going to fight it at. And quite frankly, it doesn't matter because the fight, it's, there's not a significance. It's, it's just one of these, uh, these matches. And we do that very rarely. But there are guys that live on an island. Like, like we've got our contenders and we got our champions. And then we got a few superstars and they're very few. But the outcome of their last match doesn't matter. It's the sweetest spot you could ever get to in this sport that doesn't happen without the business element. The sweetest spot you could ever get to is not my next fight leads me to this or it moves me up a rank. It's none of those things. The sweetest is where the outcome doesn't matter. Win or lose tonight. I will still be in the main event, and it's very rare. You have Connor. You had Masvidal, who is retired. And you have anybody with the last name of Diaz. It's a very rare club. Now, I believe Justin Gaethje's going to find himself there. And I believe Dustin Poirier belongs there. But either way, they're in the canoe. They're not on that island yet. It's that rare. It's that, so, Aljamain Sterling. They've been talking about Max Holloway for a little bit here. Very hard fight. Very difficult to imagine somebody could get the jump on Max and not be the number one contender, which is what Aljo wants. He's hungry. He wants the belt. God, I love that. I respect that so much. Parody, he's going from 35 up to 45. But Aljo's not completely locked on 145. I mean, it's not quite what you guys think to where he just can't make 135 anymore. His motivation and desire has got to be in place to make 35. It's a struggle. The physiology, it's a lifestyle choice. So when he had the belt and he had the main event, he's getting pay-per-view points. He, he, he's bringing out the top contenders. There's a built-in motivation. But now we start to see some of those motivations at... 145. I'm only reminding you of that because we can't disqualify Aljo from 35 yet. He's just not seen the path the same. He thinks it's at 145. And I talk about doing matches that we can still do with the active guys. When I talk about bringing these two worlds of nostalgia versus what has meaning together. Aljo is one of those fights. I would love to see a card. I would love to see some of these matches. I would love to see, is, is Nate Diaz back? I, I, I know he's still a free agent, but, but is he back? I, I consider him for MMA and UFC, but perhaps I, I, I'm considering that wrong. But I, I'd still love to see him and Connor. And I want to see Aljo versus Dominic Cruz. And there's nobody in the sport that gets protected. I know, I know there's a narrative that you like to say, oh, yeah, hey, he's not ready for him anymore. But... That's just something you say. If, if that is actually correct, the guy's released. Very tough. It's very cold. But when, when Dana White said 20 years ago, this is for champions and contenders. There's other places to go. There's other leagues. There's other ways to compete within the sport. But this organization is for champions and contenders. He was not kidding. As soon as you are identified as no longer having the potential or an ability to become a champion, right? Yeah, everything's got to go your way. I, I get that. But, but as soon as you prove, if, even if everything did go your way, you're, you can no longer be champion. You're no longer with the UFC. And I, I have to tell you that because nobody's protected. I, I don't want to hear, well, Dominic, five years ago, I, I, please don't do that. Dominic's under contract, that qualifies him. Aljo's under contract, that qualifies him. Dominic's coming off a loss to possibly the greatest fighter in the world. Sterling is coming off a loss to the greatest fighter in the world. I mean, it's, it's, it's one of these things where it all seems to make sense, but we keep on looking at 145, and we're looking at 145, we're looking at Max, we're looking at these hard, really hard matches because they can build contendership and therefore the biggest matches. I don't agree. I do not agree that those are necessarily the biggest matches. And Aljo's out there feeling out and he's sniffing around. Dominic's been very quiet. But Dominic has stayed in the pool. He stayed in the gym. If you ever see him on TV, he's clearly still training. 
it's all for something. These guys are both looking for a match. Why can't I ever get my way? Why do we got to go to 145? And why, why do we got to look? And, and the Max is, you know, he's, he, he's, he's building Aljo as best he can, but he's cutting interviews. Somebody he wants to go up to 155. And he even got Gaethje to respond. They were going to do it for the BMF. I mean, it was all of these things. I, I just feel like, and that stuff's all good stuff, right? Everything's an idea. You start somewhere, you take it to you guys, you see what comes back. If you don't get a good reception, you quickly move on. You start fanning the flame in a different direction. But while we're doing that and we're looking for things to do, and these guys are out there looking for challenges to take, there's a number of matches like this that perhaps don't have the same significance in terms of title contentions, but they definitely have a significance within the weight class. There's arguably the two greatest 135 pounds ever. Don't tell me they're not this or that. Please don't do that. That's not how it works. If you're under contract, you're under contract. If you're in the pool, you're in the pool. If you're going to fight, you're willing to fight anybody. And I know that they both are, but for some reason they haven't found each other. And I'm hoping that perhaps I just changed that.